Good morning. Today we are going to discuss about some of the part of metal forming. There will be two sections of our lectures. The first part will be forging and the next part will be sheet metal working principle and their applications. In the title slide itself it will be clear that our main operations the first part will be the forging one and that is shown in this slide. So, the title will be introduction to forging and sheet metal working. Mostly we will be dealing with the hork working procedures where our initial materials will be blooms, slabs and bellets. Just it is very very clear from this diagram the first part is bloom. Right, the bloom it is the square one and it has the dimensions of 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter. This is 150, this is 150 and that is also 150. So, this kind of cross section will be associated with bloom and it will be long, it will be long associated with that. So, it will be very long. So, this is called bloom. This is coming from the continuous casting line and other part of it and from there itself those blooms are uh, put into those rolls and other kind of forging process so that the structural shapes like this I section, I section will be associated with that. I sections and these rails, rails will be produced on the basis of that. So, the blooms will be uh, converted to either structural shapes like say I section or the rails on the basis of that it will be done. So, bloom is the initial material where the cross section is near about 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter and it will be long. So, those things will be put together and in those rolls another part and with the hot working procedures the structural shapes will be there. The second one is slab, this is slab. The slabs where the uh, have a typical uh, dimensions where the mm, length is more and the height is less, the height is less and they have some, some uh, prescribed dimensions as per the handbook and from their slab itself it will be converted to plates, sheets and coils. The third one is billet, this billet will be having small cross sections length and uh, width and they will be converted into bars and rods. So, those things will be associated with that and on the basis of that the production of all those components like say bars and rods will be done from the billets. So, these three things are the initial materials of those uh, hot working, mostly hot working, some only few part will be cold working process in order to generate all those shapes required for the different kind of applications. So, bloom, slabs and billets. And what is forging? Forging is a deformation process in which the work is compressed between two dies. It is compressed mainly compressive forces using either impact or gradual pressure. Uh, in hammer forging and drop hammers and other things it is only impact and in case of other kind it is a gradual pressure and it is one of the oldest metal forming operations dating back to perhaps uh, 5000 BC. That means uh, Indus civilization, that means uh, Mesopotamian civilization maybe 1776 BC, 1776 AD and all those things where industrial evolution took place and 1776 BC also we know those kind of forging operation in the civilization, Mesopotamian civilization, then Egyptian civilization and Chinese civilization they also are aware of these kind of metal forming processes and today uh, but there are a lot of developments in terms of time today forging is an important industrial process used to make a variety of high strength components for automotive aerospace automotive aerospace industries and other kind of application in automobile lot of parts are the forged parts in aerospace lot of parts are the forged parts and the advantage of the forging is that 
productivity is very high. In one go, we can come out of those products and various other industrial related applications that is very much possible on the basis of those forging and mostly it is hot forging and some, some occasional cases it is also cold forging. And these components of the forging uh, include engine crankshafts and these connecting rods, con rods, gears, aircraft, structural components, jet engines, turbine parts and all those things. It is a, a little bit of more processing has to be done after the forging, but huge amount of geometrical shape can be changed in one die and other part of it. And on the basis of that, the products are uh, used. So, all sorts of challenging technological applications like aerospace and other part of it, turbine parts and other things where it is uh, not easy to generate those shapes. So, there are people are using forging with a typical type of die where the dies are made of HSTR alloys that is high strength temperature resistant alloys uh, die are made so that they can withstand they have hot hardness and hot strength in order to impart all those uh, geometrical shape onto those components uh, at elevated temperature to give shape. And in addition, the steel and other basic metal, metal industries are forging to establish the basic form of large components and that are subsequently machined to final shape and dimension. Even very big components like say 50 ton hammer forging and all those things are possible in order to change those shapes. So big dinosaurial machines in one go with a drop hammer, it can change the entire geometry of those things. Like say, all those, uh, all those uh, companies like Bharat Bhari Uddog Mewlet, Barn Standard, Jeshop and Breathwet did in the giants in terms of manufacturing all those critical components for the railways. Uh, maybe uh, three to four decades uh, before they are using all those kind of uh, hammer forging and other part of it with a very big sound they are producing different components of the railways and the other industries and the sound is so great that one part of the river Ganges like say Haura you can understand uh, listen those with the other part bank of say in those uh, area of Mohakarun and other places, people also can hear the sounds. So, such a big and gigantic way of hammer forging and other things are done in order to produce those parts. And from the title slides itself, one can easily find it out. What is that? The first one, left corner here, A, you will find it out the upper die. This is upper die because it is the upper part, lower die, lower part and the workpiece and those workpiece are squeezed between the upper and the lower die in order to get some dimensional changes. The second one is the another structure where the typical uh, complex and complicated profiles in terms of dies are created in HSTR alloys. This is the upper part of the die, this is the lower part of the die with some velocity and a lot of force upper die and the and the flashes which is coming out of all those edges part of it and that will be maybe say cut together uh, after if it is not the required part and the main workpiece part will have a different kind of those shapes and geometries and that will be done on that and in one way just a closed type of die forgings and it is done and the third one is that perfectly closed so with a punch and typical type of shape of all those punches and this die, die is having uh, those uh, typical female profiles and the workpiece materials are giving all those very much complex shapes. This is the workpiece and the punch is provided with some velocity and a lot of force as depending upon the ill strength of those raw materials so the different products are done. So, different way of uh, doing forging depending on their geometric requirements and that is implemented all those by these forging processes in order to get those products done. So, these components and all those things are produced and this forging is carried out in many different ways. One way to classify the operations is by working temperature. So, main difference is that just like hot working and cold working hot forging and cold forging. Most operations are performed by hot or warm condition. Why you hot? Because the yield strength will be less. So, that less amount of force will be exerted on those components or workpiece or the part so that easily 
with a miniaturized, with a much miniaturized form of those machines we can produce. If it is done at the room temperature, the problem is that lot of forces, the machine has to be very, very big and gigantic and sometimes because of the force and other things there will be crack beyond the plastic region, it will be crack formation. So, uh, it is done at elevated temperature depending on the yield strength and other part of it. And owing to the significant deformation demanded by the process, it is a highly deforming, bulk deformation is taking place. What is bulk? I have already told in some of the earlier classes that the, where, where the volume is more, surface area is less. Surface area to volume ratio is very small, that is bulk and wherever the rivers, it will be the sheet and other part of the things. Where surface area is more and the volume is less, that will be related to sheet. And the need to reduce the strength and increase ductility of the work material, we have to do all those things in mostly at elevated temperature. But some uh, cold forging is also very common for certain products. The advantage, the biggest advantage and take away from the cold forging is that increased strain, strain hardening will be obtained and that results um, better surface finish, dimensional accuracies and the surfaces and other things are sustainable. So that is the, that is why every forging is not hot forging. Uh, cold forging also have some merit. So, wherever it is possible, we go for cold forging and most of the cases it is difficult to implement cold forging. So, we go for hot forging. So, I have already told in the forces either gradual or it is becoming on the impact. The distinctions move from the equipment uh, that uh, use the different processes of forging and a forging machine applies an impact load that is called forging hammer. It is mostly is an impact one while on the applies gradual pressure is called forging press. Press, gradual pressure, hammer, impact pressure. What can be done in by one impact that is hammer forging and whatever is done by gradual pressure that is called forging press. Like say Indian fine blanks, they are producing lot many forging press tools. And those press tools are used by, say, uh, Telco, the automobile company, in order to manufacture the different parts or all those things. And they are suppliers of all their press tools, maybe one company like Indian Fine Blank. They are specialized in blanking, but they also fabricate uh, all those part of it, of the press tools. So, for the forging presses, for the gradual pressurized and produce the part of it. And another difference among forging operation is the degree to which the flow of the work material is constrained by the die. The flowability, the ductility of all those things and depending on the die, the material has to flow through all corners of the die, nook and corner of all those die so that the complex and complicated geometries can be achieved in those die. So, die design is important and for what kind of material, what kind of force and what kind of velocity and all those things is a complex calculation people have to carry forward in order to implement that what can be the best way to produce all those things, what will be the shape of the die, what will be the force and the velocities and that has to be calculated meticulously in order to arrive at a repeated results because once the die is there, it is ready for mass production. So, people do lot of experimentation in order to make it for perfection and once it is done, the advantage is that the productivity is, is uh, not a big problem. You can scale up uh, very, very easily once a correct die is designed and the process parameters of forging is known. So, there are uh, three classifications, one is open die forging, another is impression die forging, the third one is flashless forging. So, the external other parts associated with that will be, uh, that is known as flash and that flash is not created. So, we have already discussed about these slides and this slide is the title slide of this today's lecture. One is uh, uh, open and there is nothing is closed and the second one the flash formations and third one is totally a closed die forging operations. In open die forging, the work is compressed between two flat dies as it is revealed from this picture. It is called open die. So, open die forging between two flat dies, thus, thus allowing the metal to flow without constraint, without constraint, other part it is open to flow without constraint in a lateral direction related to the die surfaces and immediately the strain of the dimensional changes will be there and this concept is known as open die forging.
it is allowed to flow in different directions. Impression die the die surfaces contain a shape, conjugate shape and other things will be created or impressed or imparted to the working during the compression and thus constraining the metal flow to a significant degree. So, only the impression will be created and on the basis of that it is constrained. So, not much uh, flowability is allowed freely. So, that is known as impression die forging. So, impression of the die will be imparted on the surface of the workpiece. And the second next one is the impression die forging. The part is that a portion of the work metal flows beyond the die impression to form the flash. Some flash is the excess metal that must be trimmed off later. So, we have seen the, in this picture what is flash. This part is called flash. This is flash. So, this will be cut across after the operation. And flashless forging where the work is completely constrained, completely constrained, no forest for the die, no excess uh, material will be produced and the volume of the starting workpiece must be controlled very closely as it is revealed from the figure. Here it is called flashless forging, no flashes, intermaterial is used in order to do that and no flash is allowed. So, different kind of geometric shapes are suitable for those kind of flashless forging process. Completely constrained within the die, no excess flash is allowed and volume of the starting workpiece material must be controlled very closely. So, that matches the volume of the die. So, there are a lot of calculations in terms of man making all those product because volume has to be calculated closely. There is no um, positions of escape of those excess material in the form of flash. Next, we come into these uh, very productive process and very required process associated with sheet metal that is known as sheet metal working, sheet metal working. So, from the slides itself one can find it out different kind of uh, products of the sheet metals and other things we can produce the different slots and perforations, different kind of notches, cutoffs, semi notches and other things will be done on the basis of the those kind of press tools and it is used in sheet metal. The first one is the slot and created it is the product and the slug will come out a typical punching procedure. The next one is also like that those perforations are created and whatever comes out to be if at all it will be the waste product. The another one the notches, total notches, semi notches, uh, those cut off line notches and all those things are there. Uh, the notching is that the top part of it. So, some opening is there that is called notching and whenever no opening is there it is called semi notching and we can produce the completed blank. Blank will be there and that will cut across and put together. So, that will be the product whatever remains there that will be the waste that is the difference between punching and blanking. In case of blanking whatever comes out from those sheet uh, that is known as the product whatever remains there it is the waste and the piercing the punching the, it is the reverse whatever comes out is the whatever comes out is the waste and whatever remains there is the product that is the main difference between blanking and punching. And the slotting it is the term sometimes used for a punching operation that cuts out an elongated or rectangular hole, the different kind of hole, Drill, no, drilling another part of it mainly circular hole, but here all those things slotting is done different kind of hole including spherical one. So, that kind of uh, whole creation of the different geometries that is called known as slotting for a punching operation that cuts out an elongated or a rectangular one that is known as slots and the perforating involves the simultaneous punching. See one tool many many punching uh, many many holes and perforations will be created depending on the press tools and involves the simultaneous punching of a pattern of the holes. And the whole pattern is usually for decorative purpose or to allow some patch passages like say filters or gas or fluids. These are the main applications of the perforation doing for that. In many of the cases it is done. So, it is done in one go. 
and the notching I have shown uh, those uh, figures which is called notches and which are called semi notches where the, all those things are covered semi notches and notches are having all those slots of opening that is called notching to obtain the desired outline of a blank portions of the sheet metal removed by notching and semi notching for different kind of fitment and applications notching involves cutting out a portion of the metal from the side or the strips. So, all those things are taking care of the requirement of the different geometries of the different uh, geometrical forms and other things the notches can be made depending on the applications. And semi notching removes a portion not the full one only portion of the material. So, some opening and other part will be there uh, in the figure itself one can find it out what is the difference between the notching this is notches these are all notches and this is called semi notches. So, notches generation is notching and semi notches generation is semi notching and cut off line to create the different parts. So, notching semi notching and the difference uh, removes a part portion of the material it might seem the same as a punching or slotting operation and difference is removed by creates a part of the blank that is the difference as per the geometry is concerned semi notching and notching. And this is called flanging, age preparation, flanges and age preparation will be there. There are many kind of a, a flanging, one is straight flanging, straight way, so that it will be just covered. There are many applications, there will not be stress concentration, there will not be very sharp edges, that is called straight flanging. The next one is stretch flanging, so that it is will be stretch and some kind of curvature and other things are obtained and other one is shrink flanging forcefully just uh, reduced uh, those kind of dimensions another part of it. So, that is called shrink flanging it is done to cover all the sheet metals another part of the age preparation. And this is uh, the first one is uh, very good it is done it is also done in the clothes and that is also done in case of those sheet metals that is called hemming hemming a very very popular popular stitches in case of textile operations when that can be done also in the sheet metal very good uh, pre age preparation with the folding and other part of it. So, age is very sustainable one this is known as aging. The second one is seaming so different layers will be after just this uh, pressing and together. So, very uh, good layers of those things of the different application it will be done. So, this is known as seaming different seaming just like stitches and other part of it in the clothes that is called seaming. And the third one is as name the suggests the curvature is obtained this is called curling curling is done. So, that they have some applications of fitment and other part of it where the non-linear curves are generated at the edges it is called curling where the different layers will be generated seaming and just one layer with a very good age preparation this is known as hemming. And these are all the different operations first one is the air bending. So, air bending some 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 gap is also maintained with the plunge with the force this is uh, air bending then the up then the sorry this is uh, the channel one sorry uh, the first one is the air channel one it the channels are creating so that is why it is known as channeling the second one is youtube here the channels are there here youtubes are formed in terms of the typical conjugate shape of the punch so that is known as u bending the third one is air bending because here air is there and just put it into the die and this kind of shape and the bending is done and here is no support. So, that is why it is called air bending. Then it is a offset bending so that it is uh, shifted all those force are shifted and the some, some wavy structures are created that is called offset bending. The next one is corrugating there are some kind of corrugated sheets and other things the advantage of the corrugated sheets are that the bending and other things cannot be propagated. So, they have some design applications in terms of different kind of covers and other things. So, these kind of things are created wavesy patterns are produced by those 
punch and die kind of setup and this is called corrugating, corrugated sheets in case of tin covers and other things are there. And the last one is the uh, forming, tube forming by just forcing one can find it out all those things and then maybe it can be joined with kind of shouldering or other part of it. So, this is called the uh, tube forming process. So, different kind of forces and different kind of combinations will be used in order to go for these things. So, these are all our main discussions associated with those part of it. It is an introductory part. The first part we have gone through the forging part of it. What is open forging, die for open die forging, closed die forging, flashless forging and we have seen all the materials and other things are produced with that. And the second part we have discussed about the different operations of sheet metal forming like say notching, blanking, punching, semi notching and also corrugating channeling, U air bending, U tubing and the tube formations, the U shape generations, offset, offsetting, corrugating and all sorts of operations which are very popular in different kind of generation of the geometries in order to do the sheet metal and they have uh, terrific industrial apply applications in terms of the um, use in automobile industry, in aerospace industries and many other such kind of industries and depending on their uh, use and functional requirement and sometimes aesthetic requirements also. Thank you very much for your kind attention.